Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Welcome to the fifth and final part of this guide to fair shares. Now we get to the crunch. Now we're going to tell you what it's like to constitute a fair shares enterprise based on everything that we've learned so far. In this section, uh, we're going to tell you about European social cooperation and the way it's leading to the creation of solidarity co-ops. In 2007, um, the European cooperative movement uh, lobbied the EU Commission and the idea of a European cooperative society was introduced. And this brought together some of the practices within the movement to combine ownership by users up to 75% or over 75% rather and non-users who would hold less than 25% of the ownership of a co-op. Across the co-op movement, what we've been calling founders, labour and users would all be considered users in European cooperative law. A non-user is somebody who didn't found the organisation, has not provided labour, is not a user or consumer of the goods and services. And the reason that non-users don't get given more than 25% of ownership is to prevent them blocking decisions that want to be taken by users. Now this has led to the idea of a solidarity co-op and in the UK uh, the Fair Shares Association and others like Somerset Cooperative Services have embraced the new principles in cooperative law to create solidarity enterprises and this is a multi-stakeholder approach to social enterprise. So every Fair Shares enterprise recognises founders, labour and or users, that's users in the fair share sense, as classes of member. And if you constitute as a cooperative or a company, you can also issue these groups with shares to recognise them as investors as well. Now, fair shares, values and principles can be operationalised through associations, cooperatives and companies. If you use the association model, all you do is create memberships. But if you use the cooperative and company model, you can also issue shares. Now let's consider the order in which things happen in a fair share solidarity enterprise. Because an enterprise is built over many years and all you need to be sure is that your constitution will provide for the future. You don't have to configure everything from the outset. Firstly, founders are necessarily the first people to provide labour and they may also be the first to use the goods and services and make investments, particularly if the cooperative has been established to do production for use. Next come labour. They necessarily do things before any users know of, use or can buy goods or services. And even if users are involved in product and service development, they can't actually use them or purchase them until later. Investors, in my experience, if they invest at all, won't do so until they can see the products of labour and satisfy themselves that there are people who want to use them. So the order in which things occur is founders first, then labour, then users, then investors. Now a fair shares constitution is designed, as we've stressed throughout, to reflect how the world is when all interests in an enterprise are treated as having equal legitimacy. While it doesn't release an association, cooperative or company from the complexities of different bodies of law, it does open a pathway to reducing the costs of legal compliance by allowing you to build alternatives to it. Founders, workers, users and investors can invoke clauses in the constitution and do a number of things. They can share intellectual property. It means that you write into the constitution different um, conditions of engagement for your workforce and your users. You don't operate the private enterprise system of intellectual property management. Then you can engage in new modes of exchange that don't necessarily have to follow the rules of the market. Your users and your producers now belong to the same organization so you can devise your own rules of exchange that don't have to go through market pricing mechanisms. Thirdly, uh, because people are members and because they are equal before the law, you can use mediation to resolve disputes. And we write this into our constitutions. 
It means that if somebody wants to engage in an adversarial legal process, you can point to the Constitution to say, no, you must mediate first. And lastly, because all of these different stakeholder groups are framed as members and shareholders, you can actually practice shared ownership, governance and management. Let's summarise the argument so far. In all the popular enterprise forms that we're aware of, the norm is to exclude key stakeholders. Usually you enfranchise just one, and you might include others if you can think of a good reason to do so. The logic is the reverse in the fair shares enterprise system. You start by including your key stakeholders, the ones you must need to survive, and you only exclude a group if you can think of a good reason to do so. Now we can think of some reasons or some circumstances in which one or more groups might be excluded. So let's now look at these. Firstly, there can be a case for worker cooperatives and employee owned enterprises. For example, if you've constituted a business that doesn't supply the public and only supplies other businesses, then it might make sense not to have user members or user shareholders. Similarly, if you're a user cooperative or a user owned enterprise and your labour force are all users as well, then it doesn't necessarily make sense to have both labour and user members. So in a food co-op, you grow the food and you eat it. In a tenants co-op, you might look after your properties as well as live in them. So a first generation fair shares enterprise will encourage cooperative management and governance involving all of the four member groups. And throughout that first generation, it's more likely that you will have discrete member groups. A first generation fair shares enterprise will also still have its founder members. And it doesn't change or end its first generation status until all the founder shares have been cancelled, which might occur when the founders die, or if the founder is an organisation when it is dissolved, or when an individual or a legal entity surrenders their shares because they want to hand them over to the other stakeholders. Now, a second generation fair shares enterprise, many of the investor shares will now be owned by users and labour. So you begin to see different patterns of ownership. Labour and users acquire control by actioning the power transfer mechanisms that are built into the fair shares model. So both users and labour can acquire shares in a cooperative and a company through what's called a member share issue. Each time the enterprise generates a surplus, some of that surplus is used to acquire investor shares for users and labour members. So in the second generation, the fair shares enterprise has no founder members and the bulk of the ownership of the enterprise is held by its users and its labour shareholders. So let me now conclude. A fair shares enterprise is structured to reflect real world complexities in order to make running your social enterprise simpler. That simplicity is achieved because legal compliance with rules that exist to manage conflict with non-members will fall into disuse naturally when they are included as members. Fair shares enterprises can accommodate both production for use and production for market because labour members can also be user members. And fair shares is based on research informed assumptions that inclusive cooperative management addresses complexity to simplify management. So all that remains now is for me to show you the resources that we've created if you want to go further into the use of the fair shares model. Firstly, we've created a fair shares website. And if you click that link, you will find this page. This page uh, gives you introductory articles and gives you an overview of the logic of the fair shares model. We also have a fair shares community and you can access through our fairsharesassociation.com website. If you click on that link, you will open this page. If you scroll down, you can see that you can get to the fair shares association, the fair shares model. And on the right hand side, you have an online community so you can join other people who are using the fair shares model and ask questions about how it's used. 
Then we have a technical support site. This is a wiki. Same technology as Wikipedia. Uh, and you can navigate around this and get technical information on the terms that are in the Constitution. And there's also help, very helpful information on how the different rules inside the Constitution work. Then we have a novel, a very accessible way of learning about solidarity co-ops, the social economy, and specifically the fair shares model, hopefully in an amusing way as well. So you can go to that by going to click that link and you'll get through to our Create Space page where we've published this book. It's available in print and in Kindle version. Then we have a full length book. This includes a 70 page introduction on the history of solidarity co-ops and the development of the fair shares model. Uh, the second section has a whole series of learning activities, which I'll show you in a moment. And the third section has three model constitutions, one for associations, one for co-ops and one for companies. Just show you. Here's the page on Create Space for the, fair share, the case of fair shares. Then we have academic conference papers, journal papers and learning materials. Let me show you these. So here are the fair shares materials. These are held in a Dropbox. If you click the link, it will show you this Dropbox. These are Word documents that you can download and use. And then we have academic articles. If you click through to the links, this is a conference paper that was given in Australia. And this is a journal article that was published in a Croatian journal uh, about the links between um, social enterprise and the fair shares model. So we hope you use it well. Uh, do join the community, ask your questions, we'll help you as best we can and join our voluntary association to create a fair shares world. Thank you very much.